Hi, I'm Laura, and welcome back to Book Bubbler. Um, this is my friend Danny, of course, you know, as Spinelli Speaks. If you haven't checked out our channel, what's wrong with you? Go check it out now. <laughs> Subscribe, give, hit that bell, whatever, do all the YouTube things. Um, we're here now with part two of our discussion of London by Edward Rutherford. So this is essentially the second quarter of the book. Yes. So go check out part one, it will be on Danny's channel. I'll link that whenever we have the link. And um, please watch them in order, it'll help hopefully <laughs> yeah. make more sense. I mean, it's a little confusing anyways, just because it's a lot, but that'll make more sense if you start from there. So, okay, we're gonna start with chapter seven, which is called The Mayor, which starts in 1189. So it kind of goes, you know, twist 20 years after the previous chapter of The Saint. So. Yeah, there, uh, oh, this <laughs> this makes me really happy. This is around the time of Robin Hood and Richard the Lionheart. It so, is, yeah. like, and mm -hmm. I think that's what's so awesome about reading this book is if you are someone who likes British history, if you're familiar with British, um, like, folklore or fairy yeah. tales, and certain things pop up, you're like, oh, yeah, I know that. Yeah. I know who oh. this is. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, they're going to fight the Saracens. Oh, I totally yeah. know where this is. Yep. Mm -hmm. Or if you aren't familiar with the actual history and you only know the folk folklore, folklore, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I am just a fool on my channel. So if you I like don't know fools, how to edit, so yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and you, you read, you know, about King Richard, mm -hmm. the Lionheart, you immediately, like, for me, I'd be like, isn't that from Disney's Robin Hood? Like... Right. Is that a thing? Like, mm -hmm. that's a real thing? And then mm -hmm. me, I'd be like, doo -doo -doo -doo, on the yeah. internet, like, oh, it is a real thing! Yeah. <laughs> oh, I know. Oh, so finally, this is the chapter where the people with the white tufted hair finally get a last name, and that is Duckett. Yes! Also, sometimes Ducker. Yeah. At first, which I don't know why. And then it changed to Doggett. Yeah. But then it comes back to Duckett. Mm -hmm. But it's Duckett, at least. Yeah. So they finally have a last name to follow. And they, they choose that because uh, a, a babe is given to somebody to, to care for, mm -hmm. and he's got webbed fingers. So if you remember from part one, uh, when we first meet these people, they talk about how they have the white tuft of hair um, and the webbed hands and or feet, yeah. depending on the generation. Mm -hmm. So, um, of course, why wouldn't you call him anything other than a duck? I know. <laughs> Common denominator, right? Lower I really level. felt like this... Uh, section had a big theme of like citizenship you oh, know, and what it meant to be a citizen and um, if you were versus if you weren't mm -hmm. how your um, status was within right yeah this is where the doomsday book reference from a few chapters ago where everything hits the fan and not a good way I mean not that hitting the fan would be a good thing I don't know what I'm talking about um, but but for Duckett's yeah. lineage, at least, oh, it like, man. totally messes a lot up, which is so ultimately another way that Silver Sleeves just messes everything up. Mm -hmm. Oh, I just hate them this so much. This man is so into revenge. Mm -hmm. And the thing is, is Laura and I, we just did not annotate well enough because oh, I did not remember. Like, what was, the, what was the first thing that just got Silver Sleeves, like... Why is he so I don't know. interested in just ruining the ducats? Like, and there's something else with silver sleeves in another family too, isn't there? It's just I sort of so. hinted. I mean, they just sort of hate everybody. Yeah. But it's like, why? You are the worst people. The absolute worst. Yes. Capital letters. Yeah. The absolute worst. Why do you hate everybody else? And I know it's just like legend, sort of family lore. Yeah. I get it. But I mean, they refer to stuff like it's actual events. But even the events they refer to are not even an actual event. It's just mm -hmm. like, well, they did a bad thing. Yeah, but you don't know what it was. No, and like, oh my god, they're just... I mean, they probably just looked at each other the wrong way. <laughs> probably. So dumb. I know. Probably had to do with a woman or something, because it's, it's all It's always about, about a woman. It's always about a woman. Ugh. And there are two characters that kind of come up in the next chapter as well, and their descendants a little bit. Brother Michael and Sister Mabel. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> let's just say the nunnery isn't quite what you think it's yeah. going to be. Couple times. Yeah. <laughs> yeah but you know brother michael i feel like he's probably the only person that we've read so far within the church other than beckett thomas beckett oh yes who was... and chaucer mm -hmm. who was actually like truly a man of god right he was really trying to do yeah. his best and really 
trying to be a member of the clergy and yes. represent his faith and everyone else in his life was just awful uh, very much not doing that <laughs> yeah. and I feel like he still felt like he was damned like he yeah. was going to go to hell because he was not doing enough mm -hmm. um, but and yeah. you're like really dude if you look at everybody else around you you are just fine yes. like you're fine mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. anything else in there in no there? okay then it's chapter 8 which is the whorehouse this is uh, 1295 this starts and a lot of little uh, threads get tied up and mm -hmm. like little <laughs> Slight little revengey things um, happen in this shorter chapter set around the clink, which is where all the whorehouses were on the south right. side of London. Mm -hmm. um, this one really made me <laughs> laugh out loud yeah. several times. Uh, I feel like it was like a chapter for some humorous bits. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we, we followed a lot of lines that, you know, were very devastating or tragic or, you know, the things that were happening to the characters were sad and yeah. immoral and just not what you would expect mm -hmm. and then this chapter came in and it was like it lifted a little bit you're like ah ha ha yeah silver sleeves you sucka yeah I know. <laughs> <laughs> that was so like such delicious like revenge in a yes. small way yes. oh my gosh yes yeah laughed out loud yeah. um also so this is where um adam is the name of the baby who was adopted in the previous chapter who has the webbed feet and stuff mm -hmm. um so this is where his line the doggets yes no the duckets excuse me well they become the doggets they become the doggets because, because of the whorehouse yeah so the whorehouse's name is like the dog's head or something like yeah, that yeah i think so dog and something. these two women who are whores at the whorehouse mm -hmm. uh they are twin sisters mm -hmm. and um one of them gets a little a personal itch yeah <laughs> some personal she issues it's an std and uh without a spoiler that's that's mm -hmm. used in a way somehow mm -hmm. um, a wonderful wonderful way yeah but they're just really comical characters i yeah. mean yes they're whores but they help a different another character right um very significantly and their their character through that is they're very endearing uh, yeah. So you like them very much. They're yeah. pretty good people. Yeah. For for what they're thought yeah. of. I mean, they're really decent people. Which you know? is that, that familial line all the way through. Yeah. They've always just been upstanding, mm -hmm. you know, helpful uh, people who aren't jerks. Yeah. Like Silver Sleeves. Every single line of Silver Sleeves is awful. You know, yeah. Barnacle's line, they're, you know, they're, okay. they're kind of just like, ah, whatever's happening. Mm -hmm. And then when we see Bull again, like, they're just, yeah. again... They're prominent, but they don't really do much. Whereas I believe, like the Ducket Dogget line, is are, are doers. Yeah. They they try their best to do more. Whereas Silver Sleeve just gets in the way, and just is. Yeah. Ugh. They're always manipulative, but yeah. they're always seemingly have some power, or they have the right title, and they have a decent reputation in the city. Mm -hmm. So they're thought of as. You know they're highly regarded in some ways with people like barnacle that don't really know them but they know of them so like oh they're good people so you should try and befriend them and really they're just all jerks you know mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um and they're very deceiving oh like, my gosh yes. silver sleeves in every single so section manipulative. people assume that they are one way when really we know as a reader like they are doing some bad stuff mm -hmm. and but everyone else perceives them as wealthy good to do a prominent family you know people you want to know and behind the scenes they're they're usually broke they yeah. are scheming something and they're always seeking revenge yeah constantly, constantly. for some perceived whatever i mean yeah. yeah it's terrible there's another so joan is yes. one of the main characters she shows up kind of out of nowhere and joan is a virgin mm -hmm. at the start and <laughs> She, but how does she start this out? Does well, she, she is, so I she's a young, she's a younger girl. I would say she's probably 15 years old. Yeah. And again, the, in the time area that this is, that's like a woman, so to speak. Mm -hmm. And she's in love with um, Martin Fleming. So this is starting a new yeah, no, lineage, a new line. And uh, she's in love with him. And he ultimately gets uh, imprisoned for something he does oh yeah and so he's he is a prisoner 
and the only way and, and sentenced to death essentially right. like he has a noose around his neck yeah at more than at one, one time yeah i think and so the only way to get him off is for a whore to come and present herself to him and he will marry her and essentially what it is is it's like the government's way of saying if you will bring this woman out of the filth out of the right. you know bad way that she's gotten into we will we will keep you from death mm -hmm. so that you can you know keep this woman out of the right it's the slums. christian thing to do yeah, is to really exactly. help this poor person you know so she devises a plan to talk with this Isabel and Marjorie, who are the twins, yeah, the twins, the doggets, mm -hmm. who are the whores, to basically be presented as a whore, and it all goes awry. Yeah, she's like, oh, I'm going to sell my virginity at their place of business, mm -hmm. and this will be some big draw because they don't, virgins don't come up every day on the market, so. Because she can't just go to the prison and right. say she's a whore. It, right. It, people have to say, yep. She's a whore. Yeah, the rumor has to be out all over the place very quickly, and that's the fastest way to do it, is to be like, listen, there's a virgin looking to um, start working, let's say, yeah. at this whorehouse. Uh, so it, Which like, just makes all these nasty men right. come out of the woodwork. Including Whoa. a silver sleeves, yeah. of course, because, of yep. course. Um, yeah, but Joan, it's, everyone wants to get with Joan. Like, there are decent people, that Barnacle, I think, so it was kind of Bull decent. who got there first. That's right. It was Bull. And then I he, get Bull and Barnacle confused all yeah, the time. Yeah, and Bull really, uh, she confides in him essentially, yeah, and the he whole says, thing. "Yep, I'll help you." Mm -hmm. And then Barnacle gets super mad mm -hmm. because he wants her too. And then when he gets there, it's like literally as Bull and Joan are walking out, and mm -hmm. he's like, "You said I could have her," and Bull's like, "I already had her," and yeah. like, "Oh my gosh." Hilarity ensues, mm -hmm. and then Silver Sleeves comes and just almost ruins the whole thing. Yeah, he kind of misses that uh, she's already started working. Yeah, and he thinks he's still gonna get her. Yeah, like so, oh like, whatever, I'll I'll have I'll have the second. second right, it's still pretty good. Helping. Like two two isn't bad. Number two isn't bad. Sloppy seconds is fine for me, which it's way too good for him. Um, so he starts to like sneak around like and he thinks he's gonna like spring on her at night or something in this attic room and like the bosses won't know and everything so then the twins kind of come to the rescue and yeah he gets his come her. Up and very much so yes mm -hmm. ish enough for me to be happy yeah <laughs> cackle delightfully yeah <laughs> So yeah, that was the whorehouse. Yeah. For a short chapter, a ton of stuff happens, but yeah. it was so nice, like you said, to have some levity and lightness mm -hmm. and not just be so doom and gloom and everyone yeah. good getting screwed over constantly. It was like, yeah. fun. Yeah, and it fun. finally, it introduces the Flemings, which yeah. I think come into play in the second half of the book that we haven't gotten to yet, mm -hmm. um, but it introduces them and where they kind of started to yeah. come in a sense, so yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, chapter nine, which is London Bridge. This starts in 1357 and moves through the end of the 1300s, essentially. And this is a big chapter. So big. And all the families that have come into play a little bit now are like all major players, major characters. Um, so this, and this section starts with the plague? Because there's two yes. times that the plague hits London. Mm -hmm. So it starts with the plague and then it ends with the plague. Yeah. And this is also the chapter where we um, see another real person, which is uh, Geoffrey Chaucer, mm -hmm. which is huge. And yeah. it opens with him and another man, I think Bull, yeah. uh, Bull. find a baby. Uh, who's ultimately been left because of the plague. Mm -hmm. um, so this happened quite frequently. If a, if a house um, is touched with the plague, you know, they would abandon children um, in hopes of one, maybe they'd be saved if sure. they didn't already get the plague. Mm -hmm. um, but on the, on the flip side of that, people were hesitant to pick up a babe because if that was, if they were being taken out of a house with the plague, they could already have the plague and then you're taking right. it in. But Jeffrey Chaucer and Bull, uh, Jeffrey? family Bull, Joffrey, Jeffrey, Jeffrey, Joffrey. Joffrey yeah. with a G. I don't know what that is. I think it's Joffrey Chaucer. Yeah, but Bull is also Jeffrey. So maybe it's, it's Joffrey both. I'm not sure. No, Gilbert. it's Jeffrey Duckett. Yeah, because Gilbert that's Bull. the baby. The baby is Duckett. Yeah. Gilbert Bull is yeah. the one with Chaucer. 
who yep. and they decide and then together they name, to adopt him yep. essentially. Well, and not then they together. Name him. Yeah. Not a couple. Not a couple. The bulls adopt yeah. the baby. <laughs> and then Joffrey is a because he's a student essentially right, at, the time, at the time, and mm-hmm. he is the godfather. And then they name the baby after him, mm-hmm. um, which is now Joffrey Duckett. Because then they find out who the family is, and the family did die, but the baby didn't. Right. And it's the white, tough-haired, webbed, webbed mm-hmm. feet. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The good people. The good people. I know. So Gilbert Bull, as a character, he is like the kind of the main person mm-hmm. that you follow, and it's his family you're following the most. So mm-hmm. Gilbert, um, the Bull family, is the one that owns Bockton Hall out in the countryside. So Gilbert, which is we this, mentioned in part one, yeah, yep. I forget what chapter that was, but mm-hmm. in part one, so Gilbert is the second son, and the first son, as you know, inherits everything under English law, then essentially, um, and he, so he doesn't know what to do with himself, mm-hmm. and he thinks I, I'm not sure, so he joins the military and fights and goes, well, I don't want to be a military man anymore, I don't like that, so he decides to come to London, and he becomes a linen and cloth merchant or a mercer. And he is extremely successful, like has a house in the middle of London Bridge, successful, friends with Chaucer, yeah. like. Which I didn't know yeah. that London Bridge in one of its creations, because London Bridge has fallen a couple of times. Mm-hmm. I mean, it used to be just on stilts to connect the, the two sides right. of, of London to get over the Thames. And then in this creation, there's homes on it. Like I never knew that. Mm-hmm. So that was interesting to me as well. Yeah, really interesting. And so. Gilbert and his daughter Tiffany. Tiffany, everyone wants, like Joan, everyone wants to get with Tiffany for some reason. So when Gilbert talks to her, she's the only child, Mm -hmm. and she talks to her when she's, what, 11 or 12 or 13? She's very young. And he Mm -hmm. says, you know what, daughter, I respect you so much. I want you to choose your own husband, which is totally unheard of. Like, no one does that. Mm -hmm. And very quickly, it gets around Mm -hmm. London that this rich girl, who's going to be a very, very, very rich girl, is single and can make her own choice. So all these creeps start sniffing around her, and a lot of creeps. Oh my God! It's so many dudes, so like many dudes. Every single line, lineage line, is like mm-hmm. after her, including that nasty silver sleeves. Oh my gosh! Whew. So this is Benedict silver sleeves for this one. Um, so at the same time, there is the Bull Pub, which mm-hmm. is the Barnacles run the pub. Yeah, and. Dame Barnacle, who is the wife, she's a very like shrewd, great like character though because she's female. Yeah, and you what we've seen for females is all like the damsel, like oh yeah. no, and she's like a powerhouse. Absolutely, her husband is really milk toast, yeah. totally not worth anything. I mean, he doesn't do anything; it's just his name essentially. Yeah. So, Ducket, Dogget, Ducket, Woo, Ducket, um, which is the baby. He grows up with Tiffany, essentially, so they're right. about the same age. And he's a really hard worker, and he works for uh, Barnacle. He, mm-hmm. like, has a, I guess you could call it a grocery store, kind of. Something, but it's got, a little like, market of some kind. But it's got, like, spices and yeah. different things, and he basically helps him. Whereas um, Dame Barnacle actually owns her own stuff, mm-hmm. she, so she has the, the pub um, and is very uh, proud of that. Yeah, rightfully so. I mean, she's running this pub essentially by herself because mm-hmm. her husband's useless. Yeah. And she has a daughter who's about Amy. the same age mm-hmm. as Duckett. Yeah. So at some point... She kind of, like, mm. tells Amy that she needs to... Say too much. Yeah. Yeah, she needs to, like, marry someone mm. of importance because she's basically saying, don't marry someone like your dad. Right. So she kind of gives her a few ideas of people that she should marry, and Amy's like, I like this guy over here. Who's kind of, again, milquetoast. He's, mm-hmm. like, not that exciting, mm-hmm. but she's in love with him. Yeah, she thinks she is. Yeah. I know. I know. Okay, so that's one chunk. But it comes back to these people, too. So that's yes. what we have to talk about. This mm-hmm. is a lot in this yeah. chapter. Mm-hmm. Okay, so back to Tiffany. Mm-hmm. So she and Duckett Doggett, who were kind of raised together, friendly, yeah. um, they start to flirt a little bit when they're 12, 13 or something, and... Friendly flirting. Yeah, not, like, nothing pervy. And Tiffany says to him innocently when they're, like, walking somewhere out in public, you know, I've never been kissed yet, and he gives her, like, a very chaste kiss. But frickin' Benedict Silversleeves sees it from across the way and goes, oh, I see. Like, I know what I can do. Yeah, he should have a mustache like that. Very much should. So, totally should. So, he, like, 
goes up to Duckett afterwards and is like, hey, I saw what you just did and I think it's in your best interest if I keep this a secret and you just don't talk to Tiffany anymore. So he doesn't talk to her for yeah. like 10 years or something. A long time. Because he's a good, he's a good boy. Yeah, and he loves her. Yeah, I and mean, he want, I mean, I think at that point it's like a, a friend love, it's right. a protective love, and Silver Sleeves, who's a little bit older, is like... Right, I can eliminate this guy really quickly by kind of blackmailing him, essentially, yeah. and I can make sure that he doesn't get in, because he's close to the family, and I don't want him in there, so let's try and get this decent guy out of here. And meanwhile, Silver Sleeves has his own racket going. Oh my God! Yes, he he has a title, like a, works lawyer. as a clerk or something, or a lawyer. Yeah. That's what it is, a lawyer. And it is lawyer and not solicitor. Solicitor, which I think is kind of strange, but whatever. Um, so he has this gig, but it's not enough money. And the Silver Sleeves have really come down. They have nothing left. They have their name and a decent rep in the city, but mm -hmm. they're totally broke. And Silver Sleeves knows he has to get a bunch of money if he wants to marry Tiffany and be with her. So then Tiffany's father, Gilbert, thinks that he is a decent person and that it's a good match and he will, even though Tiffany's deciding for herself, mm -hmm. you know, that the father will hopefully push Tiffany towards him. Yeah, he's like promoting him. Silver Sleeves because right. Silver Sleeves has been on the sly, like talking in his ear, like mm -hmm. how important their com like combining the families mm -hmm. would be and, you know. And he gets into alchemy. And were that milk toast guy, the husband of Dame Barnacle, I forget, don't remember his name, it doesn't matter. He's slowly stealing money from the tavern, unbeknownst to pretty much everybody else, to give coins to Barnacle and like under the cover of night to try and make gold. So he is just bankrupting his entire family slowly over the years. Yeah. Dame Barnacle finds out and thinks that Duckett is the one behind all this because yeah. her husband isn't smart enough to do it. Because the grocer it. isn't making any money, right? And she doesn't understand why. So she, what she's assuming is that Duckett is like taking the money mm -hmm. out of the like, um, like a lockbox, yeah. storage box, something that's hidden underneath peppercorns. I think. Yeah. A bag of peppercorns. Yeah. And then mm -hmm. there's like an earthquake. Yes. Which happens while Duckett and the man are in there and it makes it so that he like kind of falls into a room and he sees them trying to change the coin into gold right like this is the very like they've done it a few times and he's almost out of money this is the last of barnacle's coins he's giving to silver sleeves yeah. so it just happens to be the right time where the earthquake hits and it's of course Barnacle thinks it's some, um, this guy, Silver Sleeves is so yeah. powerful. They're really going to make gold this time because everything is shaking. And the door swings open and yeah. Duckett sees what's been happening and what a cheat Silver Sleeves is. And so like that really kicks off a whole other round of stuff. The poor guy, he, I think he, he must have suffered from some kind of like mental illness, like as far as yeah. like depression. That's right. So he's easily influenced. Mm -hmm. So when Silver Sleeve comes by and's like, "Oh, I can, I can help you be successful. I can change this into whatever," and when really he's just stealing it for himself, mm -hmm. um, because basically what happens is, is the gold only lasts for like a couple of minutes or whatever. So then sure. it's like, "Oh, it doesn't work. I'll go ahead and take this off your hands." Right, and he just like remelted into coins or whatever. Mm -hmm. Like, and because mm -hmm. he works at the mint part time or like has connections or somehow yeah. he can like do it or whatever. Yeah. It's quite so, annoying. Yeah. So. Getting back to Tiffany Bull, yeah. this is a lot I know. Getting back to Tiffany, so she and she hasn't talked to Doggett now in quite a while, mm -hmm. and she thinks about him sometimes. But doesn't really know, so she sort of decides for herself after her father tells her to that she's going to marry Benedict Silver Sleeves because mm -hmm. he's upstanding and has a good reputation and he's always like around and he's so smart and he knows all this stuff. He gave them an astrolabe and like all this stuff so they like Gilbert Bull thinks is the best thing and he pushes her and she's like he is a nice man I do like him I think I would have a good life I'm gonna marry him right but she runs into Doggett somewhere on the street I, I think that's Duckett. how it is Duckett see sorry Duckett on the street and they start talking again and she realizes that she really loves him yeah so and he and she talks person. to Amy who yes. also says oh I'm gonna marry Duck it, and it's like you don't even think you and just Tiffany's know like, of him, Wait. and she's yeah. like, uh, uh, no, that's my man. Right? Yeah. No, I don't think so, lady. So, 
all this stuff, there's lots of twists and turns, and it ends up where there is a big sort of party or gathering at the Bowles house on London Bridge, and Tiffany says- To basically says, for her to, like, to pick somebody. Right, she'll say like, I'm gonna point out my future husband in the room. So all these like lurkers are all there with her dad, with everybody else. And there is a maid in the Bull household that comes to Doggett and duck it, dang it, duck it and says, Psst, this is happening. You need to come here dressed up. So he dresses up as a maid and like sneaks up the stairs, gets into the room. Tiffany sees where he is because she knows it's going to happen. And she goes, you, I'm going to marry you and points at him. And then everyone gets in a huge uproar and her father, Gilbert, backhands her. Like, yeah, sort of accidentally, but she falls out the window and into the Thames. And everyone is just kind of going, oh my God, like a bunch of chickens with their heads cut off, don't know what to do. And Get a rope! Get yeah, a rope! Duckett goes, nah, and he jumps in and goes after her. Right in there. Mm -hmm. so, you know, the Thames at that time, that's like, they pour sewage yeah. and ugh. It's ugh. pretty gross. I know. Yeah. <laughs> Please don't drive. So, they get married mm -hmm. and have kids, and Gilbert Bull is mad about all this. Yes. Because he wants the Bull name to go through, and not... This, who is this guy who just stole my daughter or whatever? He's nothing. Um, so he runs away to Bockton, to the estate in the country. And then he gets to know his grandkids a little bit as they're having kids and goes, this is a really huge mistake. So in the meantime, they had nothing. And Duckett works really hard and makes a name for herself, himself, herself, himself. So he and Tiffany are rising up in the world. And then at the same time, Gilbert sees what a decent person he is, how his daughter is happy, how much he loves his grandkids, and he gives them all the money and inheritance anyway. So then finally, Duckett is like in a good spot. He's happily married, he's got like kids, he's got all the money he could ever want. It's like a really nice ending to a whole bunch of crap happening. Yes, because if you recall um, earlier in this uh, uh, video and the part one, the Duckett Doggett lineage just keeps getting like crapped on. And yeah. this was the first instance where it was like they finally were able to overcome all of the other elements just pushing them down. Mm -hmm. um, so it was really nice to finally see the good, like the good person right. prevail. So yeah. Finally, for the first time in what, like 600 pages, yeah. 500 pages? I don't know. And then Bull, doesn't he like end up like communing with a nun? <gasps> Sister like, Mabel. Yeah. No, so, Sister Olive. Sister Olive, that's yeah. what it is. So yeah, There's a lot of sisters. They ain't nuns. I mean, no, they're not. <laughs> and one of the reasons he threatens Tiffany with like, I'm going to get married again and start a new family and you won't have any of my money if you don't change your name. And she's like, I don't care. I love my husband. Mm -hmm. We don't need your money. It's fine. So she sort of figures out that if she can get um, her dad a companion mm -hmm. that won't want to marry him, then it'll be easier. Maybe he'll change his mind sooner. And that's where the sister comes in. And... The dad's very happy. The sister's very... I mean, everyone's all happy with it. Yeah. So, yeah. It was a good... Yeah, it was a good section. I know. And then the plague ends the section mm -hmm. and takes Jeffrey Chaucer. And that's yeah. a real thing in history, so that's right. not a spoiler. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> a little late in your history there, but yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I know. So, yeah, that's everything. So, that's the halfway point now mm -hmm. of London. Mm -hmm. So, I think the next it's chapter good. is uh, Hampton Court. So, we're on chapter 10, yeah. Hampton Court. Um, which I started, but I'm gonna have to start rereading it. I, know. I didn't read anything in June, so yeah, it's really good. And after that is about the globe, which is gonna be like yeah, Shakespeare. As it comes up like further and further in history, it's gonna be more exciting, I think, too. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Well, have you guys read this one? Have you read other books by Edward Rutherford? I mean, I, they're all chunksters. Mm -hmm. They seem to be kind of the same thing. I, so far, I am very happy to be reading him in future at some point. Like. Yeah. Absolutely. I think I'd like to try the Ireland yeah. um, piece that he has because mm -hmm. I, I really like Irish history as well. So yeah. Anything in the United Kingdom. Yeah. Is really Seriously, just anything. Amazing, so. Anything at all. Yeah. So, yeah. All right. We will be back at some point in the future. Yeah. Several months from now. You may be married. Yeah. Actually, you probably will be married by then. Maybe. Unless you come before. Yeah. Well, I get married in October. But are we going to really finish this? Oh, no. Not for this. No. You might see it's us July. together. Yeah. Yeah. before then but this we probably yeah, no. won't come back again until december or january mm -hmm, really probably yeah i know so thank you so much for watching go check out danny's channel subscribe if you haven't already you'll find part one there mm -hmm. and um 
thanks so much for watching and hanging out with us as we sweat profusely. I'm so hot. I know. <laughs> it's so hot up here. <laughs> We're going to go in some air conditioning, I think. And um, I'm going to stop drinking coffee. So, all right. Bye, you guys. Have a nice day. Bye.